Here is my little bit of jungle containing a number of animals and plants. It has predators, a lake, and even thunderstorms. In this video, we are going to take a deep dive into it all because you guys asked for an update. So, without further ado, let's begin. To those who are new here, this tank is called a polydarium. A polydarium is a tank that has both a water and land portion. The most dominant animals in the tank are the geckos, crabs, and shrimp, but there are some smaller ones who occasionally show themselves. I really know a lot of you are eager to hear how everything is doing. I'm going to begin with the geckos because they're the newest inhabitant. They've been doing really good. So good that they won't stop laying eggs. They've been laying them all in this top corner here. And by luck, I managed to film a pair of babies literally minutes after they hatched. You would not believe how tiny they are. I put one on the tip of my finger so you can get a sense of scale. Now do be aware that if one of these morning geckos tries to run away, it will run at Mach 5 and my chances of getting it back are pretty slim. Over the course of the last few months, I was finding baby geckos all over the tank. If you didn't know, they drink by licking water off leaves or the glass. Here's a newly hatched baby trying to shed its skin. The white part is what she's trying to take off. A fan favorite of this tank is definitely this mini palm tree. You guys aren't the only ones because there's always some animal on it, whether that be a baby crab or a baby gecko. I know I showed this in the last update, but I recorded another time lapse of the palm tree. Every night, it closes up its leaves and in the morning, it opens back up again. If any of you know why it shrinks up like this, feel free to let me know in the comments. Anyway, enough of that. Something I realized I never filmed was the misting system. These black pipes at the top actually make it rain several times a day. Let's give it a run in 3, 2, 1. After it rains, you can usually hear the geckos chirping at one another. They're actually very social animals. I'll shut up and turn off the music so you can hear it for yourself. Now, on to the vampire crabs. They are far more reclusive than the geckos, and I'll need to tempt them out with some food. Here, I have a frozen cube of blood worms. I put them in a little plastic cup. To defrost them, I add some water and stir it for a minute. I'll place them all over the tank to lure out the crabs. Here is a chunky male crab going after some. And this baby crab took a comically big worm. Speaking of the baby crabs, they have grown a ton. Here is one on my finger eating some fish food. If you thought you had parent issues, these animals take bad parenting to a whole nother level. Both the geckos and the crabs will eat their children. Wow, that sounds much worse after saying it out loud. As mentioned in a previous video, these crabs are cannibalistic. Despite this setback, 
the crabs have been doing incredibly well and I've only seen growth in their population. The geckos on the other hand, well, they don't really stand much of a chance against their parents. Um, the adults are much bigger and faster than the babies. Whenever I spot a baby gecko, I move it to its own separate tank so that it can get bigger before I reintroduce it into this main tank. Don't worry, they're all in good health. Anyways, with the rest of the bloodworms, I drop them in the water area. I know it looks pretty empty right now, but here's what happens over the course of an hour. Despite what you may think, there isn't much maintenance that goes into running this. Every once in a while, I need to clean the glass. I just use an old rag to wipe off the dirt, water, poop, and uh oh, how did that baby crab get there? Before I talk more about the tank, I want to quickly mention that this video is made by me alone, from the filming to editing to whatever other jazz goes into it. I'd appreciate it if you could help me out here and like this video, and if you want to see more, consider subscribing. Thanks. Alright, so something else I haven't filmed is how I go about feeding the geckos. One of the things I feed them is this powdered gecko diet. It has fruit, bugs, minerals, vitamins, you get the idea. I pour a little bit of it into a bottle cap and stir it with some water. I then place it at the top of the tank and wait. Here is a baby gecko licking some off a skewer. Okay, I got a little off topic there. Something else I do to maintain the tank is water changes. Now, I don't do them as frequently as you may think. Using an aquarium siphon, I suck out like 30% of the water every once every one or two months. I then top it off with some fresh water. I get a lot of questions on how I keep the tank so clean. First off, the water quality. To be honest, I don't do much of the work. I rely on all the plants to keep the water clean. The land area is even less maintained than the water. I rely on the microfauna, which are basically tiny bugs in the dirt, to clean up the crab and gecko poop. The microfauna mostly live in the leaf litter, and I need to top it off every once in a while. I'll take some dry leaves and spread them over the substrate. Then I'll mist them with some water. That's going to wrap up this video. If you have any questions, comments, or concerns, feel free to let me know in the comments. I also want to quickly say I appreciate all the support. Thanks guys, and I'll see you in the next one.